everybody said yeah. I welcome everyone to our Tuesday leaders development tonight in Jesus name and I pray the word will be relevant to every life every minister every brother every sister in Jesus name and for those ministers who are joining us since our last crusade we we'll welcome you to and we pray that the word of God will benefit you as it benefits all of us together in Jesus name father we thank you for this hour thank you for this time thank you for your word ever new ever fresh thank you lord because you are the god who remains the same yesterday today and forever and as you spoke to many in days gone by you're still speaking to every one of your children of your ministers of your servants today and as they obey you i pray that the strength and the grace and the vision and the passion to be obedient unto you grant to us in jesus name we pray will not sift your word will not say i accept this i don't accept that but the totality of your word we accept in jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray and the church said god bless you you can sit down already you know we're studying from genesis chapter 24 and we've read already quite a number of verses from genesis 24 verse 1 to verse 67 now we're going to select some verses tonight we're talking on the marriage and the family of heavenward believers the marriage and the family of heavenward believers in genesis chapter 24 verse 1 it says and abraham was old and well stricken in age and the lord had blessed abraham in all things think about that the lord had blessed abraham in all things and yet he will not forsake god blessed abraham in all things and yes he will not live a life that is all self-centered he still depended on god in everything we look at verse 2 it says in verse 2 and abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had put i pray thee thy hand under my thigh and then it says in verse 3 it says and i will make this swear by the lord the god of heaven by the lord the god of heaven abraham taught all the people in his household the way of god and he made them to honor god to love god to fear god and to be obedient to god so he could say to this uh, eldest uh, of the servants that he will make him swear by the god of heaven and the god of the earth that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the canaanites among whom i dwell look at verse 4 in verse 4 it says but thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son isaac then verse 5 tells us it says and the servant said unto him peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land must i needs bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest then in verse 6 it tells us that abraham said unto him beware that thou bring not my son thither again look at verse 7 it says in verse 7 the lord god of heaven abraham at his old age still believed in the lord 
God of heaven. If there's anything we should learn, is that as we grow older and older, our faith, our faithfulness, our dependence, our trust on the God of heaven should be increasing until it comes to the climax. After all, when we're old and aged and we're near the grave, we know that we're going to the God of heaven. And if there is any time to believe in God and to trust in God and to depend on him totally and fully, completely, that is the time. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred and which speak unto me and that swear unto me saying unto thy seed will I give this land he shall send his angels before thee he the God of heaven shall send his angels before thee and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from this. As we look at uh, this uh, chapter 24, there are things, principles that we are going to learn from. Practices are different from principles. Practices are things that people did or people do today. But what we're learning is not the practice. It's not, you know, he did it this way. For example, we cannot say we're going to marry from our tribe. Go to my land and find a wife for me there. Why? Because in the time of Abraham, uh, all the people around him were idolatrous and the people at home were the only people that believed in the God of heaven. That's why he did that. Today we cannot say that a servant of our house will go and pray and our son Isaac will not pray at all. He will just be meditating and waiting for the person to come. Today everyone because that Isaac now is a believer. He has the Bible. He hears the word of God so he cannot send the Lisa or anybody else to go and look for a wife for him. Now, today we cannot just stay at a place and pray and say, Lord, send the person now. And then as he sends the person, immediately we give her the precious things and all that. Uh -uh. Well, at least wait for some time and see how compatible we are. And then when we get to the parents today, we cannot say, eh, now she must go with me now. Let her spend 10 days with us that at least we'll be able to interact with her. No, 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 the Lord has prospered my way. And you have told me you cannot say bad or good so let her come and then they say Rebecca will you go with the man yes I will go now Rebecca cannot say that today immediately you have not even seen this Isaac and you, have, you don't even have any conviction what does he look like you see those are practices we cannot copy but what we want to dwell upon is the principle we see that is attested to and acceptable in the New Testament now we have the whole Bible Abraham Isaac Eliezer, Rebecca did not have any line, any sentence of the whole Bible. And so we excuse them, they went that, and it was good for them because at their own time they manifested faith. And faith is the key. And anyone that comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. And also, we cannot deal with jewelry now earrings and no string because at that time uh, there was no commandment of first timothy chapter 2 verse 9 now there is a commandment in first timothy chapter 2 verse 9 uh, and the children of god will go through the word of god and they cannot say because abraham savage gave this unto laban and unto all those people then uh, this is what we will do now we're going to divide the message tonight to three parts number one faith foundation for a favored family faith foundation for a favored family number two fruitful fellowship in a faithful family and number three forever freshness in the father's family let's come to number one number one is faith foundation 
for a favored family. Abraham had been favored by God. Isaac also was favored by God. And Rebekah also came into that favor. We want to see the foundation of faith. Faith foundation for a favored family. In Genesis chapter 24 verse 7. And the, the Lord God of heaven. Which took me from my father's house. And from uh, the land of my kindred. And which spake unto me. And that swear unto me saying. Unto thy seed will I give this land. He that God of heaven. He, that one who brought me out, he, that one who counted my faith, my obedience as righteousness, he, the one that saved me and brought me to a good relationship with him, he shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from this. There are four things there. Number one, Abraham's faith. For Isaac's bride. You remember? Abraham had to have faith for Isaac's birth. Now he has to have faith for Isaac's bride. Number two, the servant's faith for intercessory with intercessory breakthrough. He prayed, he made intercession, and through faith he had a breakthrough. Number three, Rebecca's faith for inherited benefit. Look at the young lady and there was inheritance that is going to be on Isaac and now that inheritance, Rebecca is going to come uh, to that by faith. Rebecca's faith for inherited benefit. Number three, Isaac's faith for an immediate betrothal. Isaac's faith, he was waiting, he was meditating. He had, he had total faith in the Lord that this errand of Eliezer will succeed and so he was in the right place and then as he was walking and they were coming God walking on both sides of the line on the side of I see God walking on the side of Eliezer and Rebecca God walking and they met because of faith in the foundation of faith for a favored family. Let's look at Abraham's faith. We're looking at number one, Abraham's faith for Isaac's bride. We're looking at Genesis chapter 24 verse 40. In Genesis chapter 24 verse 40, and he said unto me, the Lord before whom I walk, here is a servant now, um, you know, retelling the story. He said unto me, the Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee and prosper thy way and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from of my kindred and of my father's house the same faith he had for the birth of isaac he had for the bride of isaac look at romans chapter 4 reading from verse 20 it says he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Verse 21, and being fully persuaded that before his birth, Isaac's birth, he had that faith. And now Isaac is born, and Isaac had grown. He's about 40 years of age now, and Abraham still had that same kind of faith that what he had promised, he was able to perform. As you believe in your life, for yourself, for your wife, for your husband, for your children, the Lord will fulfill it in Jesus' name. Number two, let's look at the servant's faith with intercessory breakthrough. Nobody had had any breakthrough by intercession, by prayer before this man. He just stood there and this is an errand he had never run. This is a work he had never done. And this is a project he never took up. Here was the first time to do something like this and it was a very delicate assignment that if he chose the wrong person the covenant of God with Abraham will be affected because he said through thee and through thy seed all 
all the families of the earth will be blessed therefore now look at verse 24 uh, verse 12 of genesis 24 and he said oh lord god of my master abraham i pray thee send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham he was praying he said Lord don't let me be a stumbling block in this don't let me stand between you and Abraham don't let me block the view between you and Abraham give me good speed this day show kindness unto my master Abraham look at verse 27 in verse 27 it tells us and he said blessed be the lord god of my master abraham who has not led destitute my master of his mercy and of his truth and i been in the way the lord led me to the house of my master's brethren i been in the way in the right way in the good way in the righteous way in the way of the lord i didn't give it here or give it there if our prayers are going to be answered we must remain in the way i been in the way the lord led me to the right place to the right spot and to the right choice and he said he led me to my master's brethren and let's look at verse 48 in verse 48 it says and i bowed down my head and worshiped the lord this is not a second hand a kind of a religion for the man he had been in the, with abraham he had seen abraham worshiping the lord and he too he came to worship the lord in spirit and in truth and he said i bowed my head I saw the way Abraham worshipped the Lord and me too, I follow. You see, when we have servants with us, helpers with us, the same faith we have, the same worship we have, the same conviction we have, the same salvation we have, the same sanctification we have, and the same holiness we adore and we, we appreciate. That same salvation, that same lifestyle, that same holiness, they, we ought to bring to the people who are serving and working with us. Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham which had led me in the right way to take the, my master's brother's daughter unto his son and we're told in James chapter 1 reading from verse 5 it says if any of you lack wisdom if any of you lack revelation if any of you lack assurance of the choice you are making about anything anyone if any of you lack direction as to where you ought to go and what you ought to do if any of you lack stability of your decision if any of you lack wisdom or any other thing let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him it shall be given you look at number three here number three here Rebecca's faith for inherited benefit Rebecca's faith for inherited benefit look at Rebecca coming she didn't think about anything like that that morning she didn't envisage this was going to happen she was just normal not worried and not anxious about anything when we're too anxious i want to get married now i want to get married now when we're too anxious and when we're under pressure it's like we, if i don't marry this month everything will crumble and nothing will go well we will make a wrong choice we will walk in the wrong own direction but there was no worry there was no anxiety and there was no depression as to others like me of my age they are getting married and then whenever we meet this one is saying this is my fiance and that one is saying this is my whatever nothing like that at all she just came and the lord was planning for her the lord will plan for your children
and the Lord will plan for you. And they were told in Genesis chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 23, and said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? Now, as you look at the whole story, you see that Rebecca was well brought up you'll see that for hospitality she was you know when the servant said uh, let me drink a water she gave drink to him and drink to all the camels and then when a question was asked she answered politely and she answered with truth and eventually when the time came and they asked look at verse 58 in verse 58 we're asking the question now and they called Rebecca and said unto her wilt thou go with this man think about that she had never met this man and she had never met Abraham. She's so young. And she had never met Isaac. Going to a place she never knew. She didn't know the land. She didn't know the place. She didn't know the future. She didn't know Isaac. She didn't know Sarah. She didn't know how Sarah brought up Isaac. She didn't know how demanding Isaac will be. She didn't know how compatible Isaac will be. This is faith. It says faith that the things you have not seen, the people you had not seen, you just say yes. And she said, I will go. I will go. That is faith. The faith that takes the step when you do not know what might come in the future. Look at First Peter chapter 1. We're reading from verse 8. In First Peter chapter 1 verse 8, whom having not seen ye love rebecca had not seen isaac and she loved him already in whom thou now though now ye see him not yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory she had not seen isaac how rich is isaac even though he might be rich how um, how generous will she would he be? Will he take care of me? Or is he like one of these men who have the money but they do not have the heart to take care of anybody? She need know that, but believing she rejoiced with joy unspeakable and full of glory look at verse 9 in verse 9 receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your souls let's look, look at number four here here is isaac's faith for an immediate betrothal isaac's faith isaac believed that the journey of Eliezer will come out well. I still believe that the answer that will come will be satisfactory, will be fulfilling, will be pleasant. It will be exactly what she or he was looking for. What she, if uh, this lady comes, I don't like her height, I don't like her stature, I don't like her language, I don't like her behavior, I, and she's not like my mother because she, I seek a Lord is mother. I seek Lord is mother. I seek for I seek father Abraham number one and then um, I seek uh, loved uh, Sarah so much and that uh, woman now the mother had died would I have a woman a wife that will take care of me like my mother took care of me I seek faith for an immediate betrothal. We're looking at uh, chapter 24 of Genesis and we're looking at verse 62. And I say, came from the way of the well, high Roy, for he dwelt, for he dwelt in the south country. And then in verse 63, it tells us, and Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the even time. There are ways of meditating. A person can meditate and say, how long is it going to take them to come? A person can meditate and say, what kind of, uh, you know, person are they bringing? A person can meditate and say, I believe 
I'm joyful. A good thing is coming my way. My life is going to turn around and the person that is coming now is going to beautify my life. And she medita he meditated in a positive way. How do you meditate? Do you meditate on your loss, on your loneliness? Do you meditate on, you know, look at me here. But he meditated on a positive side and we're told and he lifted up his eyes and he saw and behold the camels were coming then in verse 64 we're told that Rebecca lifted up her eyes and when she saw Isaac she lighted off the camel and then look at verse 67 in verse 67 it says and Isaac brought her into um, into his mother's Sarah's tent no interview um, you know let me know this let me know this he already he, he believed he said this is the woman this is the bride and this one will do me good your wife will do you good let me have a good amen and my sisters your husbands will do you good in Jesus name and she became his wife and he loved her he loved her he didn't say i wait i've never met this lady and he just brought her to me now i'm not going to give too much of myself and too much of promise and too much of whatever i'm not going to tell her stories of my past i don't know what she will turn out to be no hesitation when we have faith in god there is no hesitation there is openness and there is immediate intimacy he loved her and isaac was comforted after his mother's death isaac was comforted after um, after his mother's death he wasn't comparing everything she did ah this is different from my mother everything she said her language is different from the language of my mother and everything in the way she dressed this one is not like my mother i think i need to you know watch and see because i don't want anybody in my life that's not exactly like my mother not exactly like the picture i've always had about a suitable partner but you know i see he was comforted after his mother's death uh, let's look at Hebrews chapter Hebrews chapter 11 I'm reading from verse 8 by faith Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance he obeyed and he went out not knowing whither he went that's the faith of Abraham he went out not knowing whither he went it's like I can close my eyes and just follow the voice because it's God leading. And when God is leading, I don't know, I don't need to know the direction. God knows the direction. And then look at verse 27. In verse 27, by faith, Moses forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him. Who is invisible has seen him who is invisible that, that's the way i seek also at the faith as if he saw the invisible as if he saw the invisible becoming visible and being a blessing to his life you see it's the foundation of faith faith foundation for a favored family we're coming to point number two now in point number two we are looking at fruitful fellowship in a faithful family fruitful fellowship in a faithful family now isaac the husband rebecca the wife and both had something to contribute to the marriage to the family so that there can be a fruitful family now what i've done here is to look at the life of isaac and see what he brought into the family into the union into that marriage into that family and i've looked
looked at the life of Rebecca and see what did she bring to the family. And then as we apply this to ourselves, the husband brings something to the family, the wife brings something to the family. As we do that, they will see that there's going to be a fruitful fellowship. Your fellowship in the family will be fruitful in Jesus' name. I seek, when I talk about I seek, I spell out I seek, I is for industriousness and S is for steadfastness and um, A is for attainment and the next A there is for advancing and C is for companionship. That, that's what he brought into the marriage and as we look at our families and we look at our marriages, what will bring I? Industriousness for an adequate provision. Industriousness for an adequate provision. Look at Genesis chapter 26 we're looking at verse 12 then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold and the Lord blessed him he sowed what we sow we reap if we sow nothing, we reap nothing. If we sow something, we reap a higher harvest. Look at verse 12, verse 13. It says, And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. Not just because he was the son of Abraham, but because he was industrious he found something to do you must find something to do a work an employment or maybe a service somewhere or you're selling the market but you find something to do and you are industrious about it in fact we are told in first timothy chapter 5 verse 8 but if any provide not for his own specifically especially for those of his own house he has denied the faith he cannot say i'm walking by faith is idle I'm walking by faith, it's indolent. I'm walking by faith, it's lazy. I'm walking by faith, it depends on charity. I'm walking by faith, it's going here and there, begging and borrowing. If anyone will not be industrious to provide for his family, especially those of his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. My brother, you will not be an infidel. Look at S there, S, steadfastness, despite adversaries, pushbacks. And you see, everything did not go easy. There are people, once they start a particular work, a particular project, a particular profession, or they lay their hands on something, and there are pushbacks, then they go back, they say, well, I've tried my best. And the wife said, what are we going to eat? You know, uh, the world at this time, the society is at this time now, they cannot do anything, they cannot provide them. And if you want to try and do something, you have a lot of pushbacks. My wife, whatever you can do and bring something to the family, that will be all right. But no, look at Genesis chapter 26, and I'm reading from verse 18. It says, and I seek dig again the wells of water which they and did in the days of Abraham his father for the Philistines had stopped them. They stopped those wells. They blocked those wells after the death of Abraham and he called their names after the names by the which his father had called them. Look at the next verse there. It tells us in the next verse, that's in verse 19 and I six servants dig in the valley and found there a well of springing water. Verse 20 tells us, And the herdsmen of Gera did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Essek, because they strove with him. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, And he digged another well, and strove for that also. And he and he called the name of his Shitna. And now in verse 22, it says, And he removed from this, that's wisdom, 
if you are trying to do a work and you are knocking your head against the wall and nothing is coming out and they are pushing you back why don't you look for a more fertile place why don't you look for a place where what you are selling will sell and the competition and the things they are doing against you will not take effect anymore and it says you remove from this and dig the northern well and for that they strove not and he called the name of each Rehoboth and he said for now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land you'll be fruitful in the land but you must try and if there's any pushback, try again. Any pushback, try again. Any hindrance, try again. Don't give up and say, nothing works here. Nothing moves here. How about the other people around there who are prospering? Nobody can prosper here. Look around you. There are people that are prospering there. So don't give up. Keep on pushing. They push you back, push forward. They push you back, push forward you will make it in jesus name in first corinthians chapter 16 verse 9 first corinthians chapter 16 verse 9 for a great door and effectual is opened unto me and there are many adversaries but then paul did not give up and shut his mouth and close the door and go to lie down in the room lazy indolent doing nothing he said there's a great door and effectual opened unto me and there are many adversaries and yet you forge on you'll move on in jesus name and then a is attainment of an agreeable posture attainment of an agreeable posture look at chapter 26 and we're looking at verse 35 this genesis which were agreed to the mind of isaac and to rebecca now if they don't share together if they don't talk together if there's no communication and if there is uh, no sharing they will not know that that thing is a grief of mine to me and also a grief of mind to her there was the uh, attitude of the attainment of an agreeable posture now when the wife is talking the husband must have a posture that shows he's ready to listen and when the husband is talking there must be an agreeable posture not that i don't have time i'm tired now we cannot talk now let's make it another time another time comes i'm tired now uh, why is it you're always tired whenever i want to speak to you why are you always tired when we have to discuss something very important and i see you in the church and i see you when you are counseling and you are all ears and you are at ease and you listen to all those people why can't you give me the same attention that you give to those other people we must attain to an agreeable posture as we talk together the lord help all of us in jesus name the next a there is um, advancing towards an affirmed promise the lord had given the promise to abraham and the promise is now transferred unto isaac and he must continue advancing towards the affirmed promise look at genesis chapter 26 i'm reading from verse 2 and the lord appeared appeared unto him and said go not down into egypt dwell in the land which i shall tell thee of look at verse 3 in verse 3 it says sojourn in this land and i will be with thee and will bless thee for unto thee and unto thy seed i will give all these countries and i will perform the oath which i swear unto abraham thy father he accepted that look at verse 6 in verse 6 it tells us and isaac dwelt in gera you see we must keep on advancing so that we can have the promise of god affirmed unto us now see his companionship with the all-time partner uh, it's uh, uh, companionship with the all-time partner you know you have to have the idea this is your partner 
and it's going to be for all time all time unto the end at a time of challenge all time at the time of moving on all time at the time of prosperity all time at the time of sickness all time at the time when things are booming all time you must accept that this is your all-time partner and that is what um, Isaac had and he provided the companionship he didn't uh, you know draw back and you know face the wall and you know we cannot talk and all that companionship in with the all-time partner look at chapter 49 of uh, Genesis and verse 31 and they buried Isaac and Sarah his wife and there they buried Isaac and Rebekah. Let me read that again. I missed a word. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. And there they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife. You know, they continued to the end. You and your wife will continue to the end. Amen. Till old age. Amen. Amen. And nothing will separate you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we've seen the part Isaac brought into the family. How about Rebecca? What did Rebecca bring into the family? We're looking at Rebecca now, and we're looking at the letters of the word of the name Rebecca R. Respectful without hypocrisy. Respectful without hypocrisy. The morning shows the day that she is the very first time that Rebecca would see Isaac. Look at the respect in Genesis chapter 24, verse 64. It says, and Rebecca lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. She didn't just sit down there like you know some of the people of the world these days okay let me size him up let me see how you'll come through before i show my respect immediately that rebecca saw isaac she lighted off the camel and then we look at uh, the next verse there in verse 65 for she had said unto the servant what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. He is exemplary in hygiene and homemaking. Exemplary in hygiene and homemaking. You can tell when she saw the servant of Abraham for the first time and she wanted water. She brought her the water and she had it in her in her you know porch whatever and the servant drank and then he didn't uh, take that what remained he didn't take that to the camels put that away and drew another one she was an hygienic woman and you can tell from the way she was organized when she gets when we get home she was a good homemaker now if we don't have that we need to learn that and God will help our wives in Jesus name give me a good good amen, amen. look at Proverbs chapter 20 chapter 31 I'm reading from verse 29 many daughters have done virtuously but thou excellest them all in hygiene in cleanliness in keeping yourself fit and good every time thou excellest them all then in verse 30 she were told favor is deceitful and beauty is vain but a woman that fear Rest the Lord, she shall be praised. Verse 531. It says, Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. I think the works of a Rebecca praised her and spoke for her in the gate. We're looking at the next letter there. B is building up the home 
for happiness after all that's what i seek was looking for i seek had been sorrowful and dejected since the mother died but now we have uh, this uh, you know man coming into our life and she coming into the life of of, uh, of isaac and we can tell from the relationship and the stories that we have read about isaac and rebecca that he was comforted he was happy he didn't look another direction didn't look to another place saying this one is not suitable what did Eliezer bring a person like this no they were compatible even though they had never met before you build the home for the happiness of everyone in the home look at Proverbs chapter 14 and reading from verse 1 every wise woman buildeth a house every wise woman wisdom does not come from certificate wisdom from does not come the wisdom that builds the home the wisdom that builds the family it doesn't come from university it doesn't come from reading books in the library okay i'm going to go to the library i'm going to read and read it doesn't come that way it comes from the inside that you love the man you appreciate the man you respect the man and you want to contribute something positive to the man you want to lift the man up and you want him to be an achiever and you know the button to press and you know the keyhole to put the key inside that will bring happiness to the man that's a home builder you study the man not book study the man see what makes him happy what makes him tick and what makes him make progress what makes him visionary and you do that every wise woman Buildeth a house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her own hands. You will not destroy your family in Jesus' name. But with your wisdom, but with all the practical things you know, you'll build up your family in Jesus' name. We're talking about Rebecca, and the next he is exhibiting honesty and holiness exhibiting honesty when she saw Isaac and he said who is that man who is that man I don't want to give respect high respect to the wrong man tell me the man tell me that man that is coming there that's your man that's my master that's the word I'm bringing you to and she said now I must demonstrate how I love this man with all honesty when you know your man when you know your husband like Rebecca and you exalt him above every man on earth you exhibit honesty and holiness we're looking at Philippians chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 6 finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are honest and whatsoever things are just and whatsoever things are pure and whatsoever things are lovely and whatsoever things of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise think on these things think on these things think on these things what we think of reflects in our tongue reflects in our language reflect reflects on our facial appearance what we're thinking of reflects on our attitude our interaction with the man we're living with if you are thinking lousy if you are thinking unkind thoughts if you are thinking look at the man and look at what he brings home and look at this and look at that that thinking you don't know even when you say good morning it will affect the the texture of that good morning but when you are thinking happy you are thinking honest and you are thinking excited and you are thinking this is the best of days for me with my man then it's going to show in everything you say i pray our thinking will improve and our interaction will improve and then we will have the right exhibition of honesty in jesus name and then the next letter there is k k 
kind, hospitable, and helpful. Already you can tell when he saw Eliza for the first time, they had never met, how she showed kindness and hospitality and also help that the man needed. When we carry that through life, you're hospitable to, or not just your husband, to everybody, the relatives of your husband. And you're hospitable to all the neighbors within and all the neighbors around. Anybody that has contact with you or contact with your husband, you are kind, you are hospitable. And then you are a person that uh, you, you're heavenly minded. You say, I'm not going to do anything that will hinder my husband from getting to heaven. Husband, I'm not going to do anything that will hinder my wife from getting to heaven. What do I gain as, you know, a wife if I make my husband angry? He's happy, he's excited, he's on top of the world, and I want to puncture his balloon so that all the air will come out. What do I gain? Therefore, I'm going to be kind and I'm going to be hospitable and I'm going to be helpful. Look at uh, chapter 31 of Proverbs. Proverbs 31 and we're looking at verse 26. She openeth her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue was the law of kindness in her tongue the law of kindness a eh? that's the letter that follows appreciated by heaven and uh, heaven and the heavenly minded you know god was thinking about abraham he was thinking about the marriage of Isaac so that they can produce a child so that God can say he's the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And so God was interested in that family. God is interested in your family. God is interested in your marriage. And I pray that wife and husband, as you know that you are appreciated by heaven, and heaven is looking at you, you produce the kind of marriage and family that you ought to have in Jesus' name. Appreciated by heaven and the heavenly minded. We're looking at Luke chapter 1, verse 28. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail Mary, thou art highly favored the Lord is with thee blessed art thou among women we can say that about Rebecca a person that came to marry Isaac and then we can have the God of Abraham the God of Isaac the God of Jacob blessed was that woman you could have been that woman if you were living at that time but thank God, he knew when you will be born. He knew where you will be born. He knew where your husband will be. And now if you are married, am I talking to married people here today? Married people, where are they? If you are not ashamed of being married, where are you? I pray that God will show you this, the person he had for you. And you'll make that marriage and family to be appreciated by heaven in Jesus' name. H, H means harmless, hopeful, and happy. Harmless, hopeful, and happy. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 15. Philippians chapter 2 reading from verse 15 that she may be blameless and harmless. That she may be blameless and harmless. You know, if you're living with somebody that you know she will never think of anything that will hurt you, that will harm you. You totally rely on her without looking any other direction. This wife, this bride, this woman will take care of you and anything that will hurt you, even if you didn't know, she will use all her wisdom, all her strength, and all her ability, all her skill to ward that thing away from you. You will rest in that marriage. There will be rest in our marriages. That she may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world we're looking at Proverbs Proverbs chapter 17 we're looking at verse 22 Proverbs 17 verse 22 a merry heart doeth good like medicine. Any good doctor will tell you that there is the effect of the mind on the body. Any good doctor will tell you that whatever uh, 
pills you take if you are not happy if you are dejected if you are sorrowful if you are thinking negative you're not going to get well you know too soon and even if the if the pill they give you is going to work let me illustrate it like this let's say for example you want to take something from the ground you didn't know that the extension of the table was there and you knocked your chin on the on the on the corner there it will give you pain and then you go to the doctor and you get a pain relieving um, tablet and you swallow that even though you swallow that again that same day you're not that same chain on that corner of the table although that pill should be working but because you are knocking it and knocking it and knocking it against that table the pain will remain there you see these medicine nowadays do not work the medicines work but you are knocking the same place on your chin you are knocking it on the table what i'm saying is this if there is always sorrow there's always sadness there's always problem there's always something negative you are thinking about about. even the food you eat will not go to the right place in your stomach you'll be having a running stomach and it, that's why it says a merry heart a happy heart a joyful heart a merry heart do it good like medicine but a broken spirit dries the bones i pray that from today good news in your family joy in your family happiness in your family and the medicine that comes regularly coming from the joy and the happiness in the family will keep you hopeful and happy all the days of your life in Jesus name we're coming to point number three now point number three forever freshness in the father's family forever freshness in the father's family we're looking at Ephesians chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 14 it says for this cause I bow my knees unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ then in verse 15 it says for of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named and then it says in verse 16 it says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man your inner man will be strengthened and then your outer man will be strengthened in jesus name three things number one born into the father's family number two baptized into the father's fullness number three blessed with the father's foreverness look at number one born into the father's family we're told in john chapter 3 verse 5 it says jesus answered verily verily i say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god the way we come into the human family is that we are born naturally the way we come into the heavenly family is that we are born supernaturally spiritually it tells us in first peter chapter 1 verse 23 it says in verse 23 being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. Thank God I'm born again. I said, Thank God I'm born again. You are a member of the family of God, and all the benefits of the family will come to you in Jesus' name. Look at number two here. Number two here is baptized into the Father's fullness. In Mark chapter 16, and reading from verse 15, it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature that's how it came to you that's how it came to me then in verse 16 it says he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved thank god we have been baptized but not just that look at romans now chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 3 romans chapter 6 looking at verse 3 it says know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into jesus christ baptized into 
to Jesus Christ it's one thing to be baptized in water it's another thing to be baptized and immersed into Jesus Christ you were baptized into his death and then he tells us in verse 4 he says in verse 4 therefore we're buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father even so we also shall walk in newness of life we're members of the family we're born again and now we come into Christ we're sanctified look at verse 6 in verse 6 it tells us there knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed and that henceforth we shall not serve sin be it fulfilled in every one of our lives in Jesus name look at Acts chapter 1 and I'm reading from verse 4 Acts chapter 1 reading from verse 4 I'm being assembled together with them he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the father which saith ye have heard of me then in verse 5 it says for truly a John baptized with water but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence look at that we're baptized into the water and water we're baptized into Christ Jesus and we're baptized into the Holy Ghost and what happens in our lives then look at verse 8 it says in verse 8 but he shall receive power you have got power say I've got power you shall, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth a greater fulfillment in every one of our lives in Jesus name look at number three number three we are blessed with the fathers foreverness blessed with the fathers foreverness as it lives forever we're going to live with him forever you are going to live with him forever say i will live with him forever look at first thessalonians chapter 4 and i'm reading from verse 15 first thessalonians chapter 4 we're reading from verse 15 it says for this say we for this we say unto you by the word of the lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the lord shall not prevent them perceive them in them which are asleep then in verse 16 it says for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise forth verse 17 it says then we who are they I said who are they we say that now and we which are alive and remain shall be cut off together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we forever ever be with the Lord and so shall I and so shall I ever be with the Lord we're going to be in the family of God forever and ever what does it look like in the family of God up there? No tears, no suffering, no crying, no heartache, no disease, no lack, and there's no evil. Forever, forever, we're going to be with the Lord. We're born again, now we're saved, we're sanctified, we're now spirit-filled, and we're serving the Lord, and we're looking forward to that day when the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and then we which are alive, we shall be caught up together with all the saints of God, and I cannot begin to imagine what will happen when you get there, and you know, no more temptation, no more trouble, no more persecution no more evil and all the things of the world everything has passed away and you are right in the presence of the Lord and if there's any tears that you have got he will take the handkerchief of heaven and he'll wipe all tears away from your eyes 
forever, 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 I will be there. What are you? Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord, I will be there. He's preparing that place for you. And He wants you to be there. And you'll be there forever and ever in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord today.